Let's see if I can run this cow over. Oop. Oh, poor cow. Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to an Unturned Guide today. I'm going to show you guys the cheat menu. Now, it's pretty obvious how to use the cheats in Unturns, but you never know, you might have missed it. So I'm going to show you how to access the menu. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make the game easier. Maybe you don't want to spawn stuff in. Maybe you just want to reduce the zombies. Maybe you want to make it a bit easier to regenerate your health. Or you want to be able to spawn in loads of loot. I'm going to explain every single one of the most important settings. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe for the best in survival games content. Go and check out all my other content I've done over the years. Every survival game going. Let's go. All right, it might seem pretty obvious, but if you go into play offline and then you decide to choose whatever world it is you want, click on the map and then press, obviously, cheats. Yes. So how do you cheat? Well, it's already in the control menu, guys. But just in case you'd missed it, it's literally pressed the L3 and R3 joysticks together and that's it it brings it up and you can see it's broken up into items it's not broken up very nicely you literally have to scan through a bunch of stuff it's all sorted out by its id number and that means that some items will be miles away from where they maybe should be alphabetically or even about what they do generally though you will find a lot of things like sweatshirts all together all together backpacks too just click on one and you can see now i've got a backpack who wants some chainsaw action? You can even spawn in vehicles. Be careful though, as it tends to land almost in front of you. So if you do want to kill a friend or a mate, you can go ahead and do that and have a bit of trolling fun. And there we go. I've got my scavenger flatbed truck. Whoop. And here we go. Now you can get ammo for this, but to be honest, I don't want to have to search through the list looking for the missiles. But you can switch gun positions and then normally like i said once you find the actual ammo you should be able to fire let's do one more vehicle what's a cerberus when it's at home oh it's a missile thing hey we've got ourselves a dune buggy and the big piece de resistance the chinook where you can literally get your friends inside this too go ahead and even spawn in loads of different creatures although there's to be fair there's only a few there we go, we've got our cow. Now let's go over the settings. Go to world options and you've got a bunch of stuff going on. Effectively, what I'm going to do is give you a brief tutorial or some of the key ones you need to know to make your experience a bit more fun. So, if you want to just survive in a world where there's loads more loot, put that all the way up to one. You can see loot is absolutely everywhere and that's because we increased the maximum amount. If you don't want things running out, say you just want to have to keep one axe, not have to keep replacing it, then make sure this box is unticked. If you want items to respawn quicker, you actually got to make this number a little bit smaller. If you want to get the best quality items to see what they can offer, then you've got to put this one all the way over to the top. Stick it on the right hand side. Likewise, put the multiplier on the right hand side too. Now you get the idea for most of them. It'll probably be along the same lines. For vehicles, you can see it's already set to one. That means that every vehicle will have a battery. If you want to increase the battery life, you can do that as well. And you can also increase the back max battery charge. So if you want vehicles to respawn more often, you need to make that number lower. It's the time it takes for the vehicle to respawn. This isn't actually a multiplier. And that's pretty much true of everything. If it says time, that will be reducing the time it takes. If it doesn't mention time, then that's just going to multiply or reduce how long something happens. That's a crucial difference. If you want more zombies in the world, because it doesn't have time, you're going to increase it all the way to the right hand side. Any of these numbers are going to increase it. If you don't want any zombies at all, put it to the left hand side and that should theoretically stop all zombies spawning. As you can see, there are no zombies. It worked, I turned off zombies and the zombies are all gone. I can now get used to the game, go loot in, find the best spots, see what map I like the most and not have to worry that I'm going to get my face eaten off. If you want greater loot chance, you're going to put that all the way to the right hand side. If you want certain zombies to spawn, then you need to increase these exponentially. If you want to experience some of the bosses a little bit more frequent, then go ahead and put that all the way to 5. So this is the percentage chance of these bosses or these creatures spawning. It still might not be loads, you're not going to jump on a server and there's going to be a bunch of electric bosses or fire bosses. But now you have got double the amount of percentage chance for them to spawn. Now one that people will get wrong is zombies damaging you. 
I've done this thousands of times in Art Survival Evolved and Conan Exiles. It's exactly the same sort of server settings set up and they're some of my most popular videos. So trust me when I say, put this as low as you can if you don't want zombies to hurt you that much. The more you increase this, the more damage zombies are going to do to you. If you want zombies to have more armor, again, you're going to put that all the way to the right. Or if you kind of want to one shot them, you're going to put that to as low as you can. So don't have this number too high. The full moon adds more creatures to the game and basically makes it harder. You can add more experience to it as well. Whenever you kill a zombie, you get more. Put that to the right hand side and you'll be flooded with XP. Mini drops, again, put it to three and you'll get more. Put max drops to six, you'll get loads. And likewise, max mega drops, do that too. I've not seen a lot of animals respawning in the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this to the left hand side. Remember, this is a time one. So we wanna get more animals on the servers. So we reduce the time it takes for them to respawn. If we want to put more damage for the animals that they do, then you increase that to the right hand side. If you never want your barricades to run out, or be really slow, then you put that to the max on the right hand side. If you're running the server and you want people's bases to kind of disappear if they're not playing regularly, then you put that a little bit lower. If you don't want any bases to have any armor, put that to the left. Increasing it to the right hand side pretty much means some of them bases are gonna be unpenetrable. Same thing for structures. Now I said bases, but I did mean barricades. It's the same thing for structures. Right, player health. This is the one that really you can start cheating. If you just want to get used to the game a little bit more almost like creative mode your health regenerates when it's above 90 percent food and water but you can reduce that you can put it all the way down to literally zero so your health will always keep regenerating same thing goes for water too and you can even set how quickly that happens if you put health regeneration ticks and you put it to the right hand side that actually means it's going to take much longer to replenish your health. If you want to replenish your health much quicker, regenerating it, you need to put it to the left hand side. Food and water is pretty much the same thing, but for food use and water use ticks, you need to put that to the right hand side. So pretty much that means you're going to have longer before it actually goes down your food bar or your water bar. If you put it at the lowest one, it means you're going to need to eat and drink a lot quicker. The numbers there, they are seconds. So if I leave food use at 450, that means it won't go down that quickly. It'll take 450 seconds for my bar to go down by one. And now I've put it down to 50, that means that food use, I'm gonna lose a bar of food every 50 seconds. Food and water damage ticks, put that low number if it doesn't want to take too much health away from you. If it's a high number, it means it's gonna do more damage when you do get to zero food or zero water. Just to demonstrate in the game, I'm gonna put the food to the left and I'm gonna put the water use to the right. If you don't want any virus in the game or reduce it as much as possible, you need to increase this one all the way to the right hand side. That means you'll have less chance of getting infected. The virus infect threshold, if you increase that number, it'll also be harder for you to get infected. Now, if you don't want it doing any damage at all when you do get infected and the timer runs out, you need to put that down to zero. That way you won't get any damage and pretty much you won't die from getting a virus. You can turn off bleeding damage in the same way too. And that goes for broken legs as well. Put the bleeding damage ticks as big as you can to the right hand side. And anything that says regeneration, put that as a low number to heal quicker. So a rule there is that anything that says regeneration, keep that as a low number and you should pretty much get recovered quicker. If you want to get more experience, crank this bad boy up. Experience multiplier to 10, and you're going to get 10 times the amount of experience for doing anything in the game. Let's go and find ourselves a tree. Let's give this bad boy a go. And there we go, 40 experience. Remember, because I put the experience all the way up. If you want to increase the radius that NPCs can detect you, well, it's pretty much set at its lowest setting. But if you increase that, they'll pretty much come running at you a lot quicker. So effectively, you're making it harder by putting it to the right hand side. That also applies to players on servers as well. Now, I've put my items on the left hand side here. So basically lost items on combat and environmental. That means I will lose every single item I have when I die from either environment or combat. So if you want to keep them, put it as one. You can see that skills is automatically set at 25%. 
So when you die, unless they're your specialized skills, you're gonna lose 75% of your skill points or your skills. But you can't, don't have to have it like that. If you point all the way to the right hand side, you won't lose any skills when you die. And then you can see things like can hurt legs, break legs. You can turn this on and off. Likewise, you can turn on how often you get fuel. So put that number even lower and fuel will respawn even quicker. Same thing goes for water, rubble, and all the resources. If you don't want it to rain ever, put both these numbers to zero. For the max rain one, you, you wanna put that to five, and that's gonna pretty much reduce how many times it could possibly rain. It's the same thing for the snow as well. And lastly, gameplay. If you wanna see yourself on the map, make sure you've got the satellite available, and if you do wanna see a compass too, click that as well. And that is pretty much how you cheat with the settings in Unturned. As I said, I've done loads of these videos. They're some of the most popular in Ark and Conan, and they're more or less the same thing. If you guys really want me to explain more in detail every single setting and show you some examples a little bit more, then let me know. Right, let's try it out. So you can see I've got the compass. Obviously that has worked. Normally water goes down a lot quicker than food. We can see my food's going down a lot quicker than water because we left them settings like that. And if we take a look at our information, you can see right in the bottom right hand side, a little blue dot, that's me. So it does work, it shows you exactly where you are on the map. Obviously really useful if you're playing with your friends and just want to meet up. And there you go, that's how you cheat in Unturned. I hope you find this video useful. If you do, make sure you leave a like. If you want to see more Unturned content, make sure you like the video and comment down below what you're going to be doing with the cheats, how you're going to be running your server. If you want me to come and visit your server, leave the name of it in the comment section down below. And I may just do that one day too. Until next time, rat bags. Laters. Come give me some milk. Yep, yeah, that worked. <laughs>